Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Once again. Is Christmas a special day for you? Is it exciting day for you? Yes. yes. All our children will say yes with some adults, right? Mainly because our presence. presence. Yes. You've already some of you already opened your presents and you can't wait to go home to open your presents. So it is an uh, exciting night, it is an exciting day of the year. Where do you think that we got an idea of a gift exchange, giving gifts to express our love for one another? Huh? Don't be bashful. Huh? Right there. Wise men started first. You can put your name on it. Who started first? God. God. Our Lord God first started. He began tradition, giving gifts on Christmas time. He sent who? His only son, the light of the world. That is the best gift of all for humanity. Why the light of the world? Why Jesus? Because people were living in darkness. We were condemned. We were doomed. We didn't have any hope without Jesus to have peace with God. That's why he sent his son to die on behalf of us, to redeem us from our darkness and to set us free into the light. And Jesus said, John 8, 12, today we read, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have light of life. You see, light forces darkness out. Light intrudes the darkness, not the other way around. Did you notice that? Light has more power than darkness. And that's why tonight our worship is uh, centered around the light. And we lighted all the candles and Christmas trees to signify God's presence, God's gift, the light of the world. In fact, our whole neighbors celebrating Christmas. They light Christmas lights to signify God's gift and His presence in our lives. In that light, in Christ, in Him, we can find some other gifts. Have you ever received a gift that within that gift, you find another gift? Mm -hmm. You know, I received a purse as a gift, and then I opened it, I found the money, and I found the gift card for, for, for Costco. Wow, yeah, it was great, right? And in God's gift to us, in Christ, in His light, we can find many, many other gifts wrapped in. Do you know what they are? I know. You all know what they are. You just cannot think of on top of your head right now. But you're not, if I say, I start to say, oh, I knew that. So, I welcome you tonight. I am glad that you came tonight. We need to be reminded of how great the gift of God is 
for our lives. And we are to remember what we're supposed to do with the gift. So, what are those gifts we can find in Christ, in His light? And I will make it short, three things. Serenity, and strength, and security, you can find. What do I mean by that? You know, I love to read in the newspaper a kid's letter to Santa. Dear Santa, they always start. And this one particular boy wrote like this. Dear Santa, we have three boys in our house, living in our house. And our parents cannot afford to buy gifts for all of us. And there is Jimmy, who is two years old. He is not too good all the time. He cries all the time. Give my mama bad time. And there is a Mark, four years old. He's good sometimes. And there is Josh, who is seven years old. He's good all the time. He's a perfect boy, my mama says. I am Josh. <laughs> so he's expecting gift from Santa because he's been perfect. He's been good all the time. The problem with us is that we are not anybody. Raise your hand if you are good all the time. You are perfect perfect boy, or husband, or wife, raise your hand, please. Oh, stare at someone. Often, then, often we are not. That's our problem, right? And a lot of times, at times, we make mistakes. We fail. And we have to live with it. We say, I wish I had done that, but I cannot change it because it's already done. Milk is already spilled. What can I do? And we walk around with guilt and shame. And some people will do anything, everything to get rid of this guilt and shame. They will grab the bottle of beer or a drugs of their choice, or go, go to Disneyland, or seeking thrills to get rid of the guilt and shame. The only way to get rid of such guilt and shame is what? Through our Lord Jesus, through the light of Christ, through His forgiveness. When we repent, when we come to Him and return, make a U-turn of what we've done, what we are doing, then He forgives us. Then we can have what? Peace of mind, the serenity. That is what? In that gift, Christ, in His life, we can find. And nowadays, People are looking into more power, more energy. Dr. Oz always talking about how to live long life, how to have more energy, how to have strength. And people drink uh, five hours energy drink, something like that. And they are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we seek for power. You go to a bookstore, there is lots of books about power. How to eat for power, how to take a bath for power, how to hurt for power. More power, more energy. 
by our Christ. In His light, we can find more power, more strength. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He says what? The resurrection power is in us, with us. We can do all things through what? Jesus Christ. He set us for that. No need to seek more power outside. We can all seek more power, more strength from our Lord God. And I don't know, you ever noticed the mortality rate in America is what? 100%. Right? It's a universal. Everybody gonna die someday. We're gonna have to face the dark days, darkness of our death. It's a hundred percent pandemic. Everybody gonna die someday. And when we die, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And his light for Christians is not fear. In spite of fear, we can move against the fear because we have Jesus in our heart. His light shines upon us. That is in that gift when we open, when we look into. And yet, we oftentimes go through dark times, dark days, as if Christ's light has gone out from us. You know, there is a story about a farmer, the guy, a guy, who was uh, sitting in front of the fire and enjoying that warm fire, and it was very cold with the night. And his wife just got out of the bedroom and said, Hey, Jay, I think it's raining. Why don't you go check? See if it's raining. And Jay said, Oh, never mind. Don't bother me. Why don't you go call in the dog, see if he's wet? I don't blame him. Sometimes we feel, right? We feel like don't just want to get out of bed. We feel like we don't feel like face the world. We feel depressed, disappointed, discouraged. But the Christmas story affirms, yes, we are going to go through dark situations, but the light has come. Light is still shining upon us. In His light, we can find serenity, strength, and security. It's like you have enough money, you paid all your debts, previous debt, you paid it off. And you have uh, enough money to enjoy whatever you need to do, whatever you want to do. And you have uh, more left to leave behind for your kids. That is the case with Jesus Christ when you have Jesus in your heart. That's what our Lord God has given us. Got it? And then what are we supposed to do with that guilt? Huh? Share it. Share it. Good job. Enjoy it for yourself and share it. That's what our Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And there was no 14 in there, but it's a simple. You are the light of the world, Jesus says. And at the end of 16, therefore, let your light shine before men. With your good deeds, bring glory to your Father in heaven. Our Lord God wants us to enjoy His light in our lives and also share it with others. It's like reflecting His light. When we have Jesus, we're going to be shining 
with his life and reflect his life to others. Think about it when you are all here because someone in your life has shared the light of Jesus. They lighted the pathway to salvation. And Jesus wants each one of us here tonight to be the light bearer, to light your candle run to the darkness. You know, some Christians, they think they are commissioned to be secret agent of Christ. Your neighbor never knew about you are Christian because you are undercover agent from the kingdom of heaven. We are commissioned to hold our light high, brightly burning, and help others to see light. Help others. A shoemaker wanted to be a missionary, but he couldn't. So, in his shoes shoemaking store, every customer comes in. He talks to them about Jesus. He gives them Jesus, and everybody, anybody who comes in. So one day his friend says, "Hey." Think about Jesus. You making your you are ruining your business here. So stop talking about Jesus. And this shoemaker says, "My business is talking about Jesus. I am making shoes to just cover the expenses." Hallelujah. That's what our Lord God wants us to do. In anywhere, everywhere, whatever you do, you're working at Walmart, working at Costco, working at in the moon, heaven, wherever you are, God wants Jesus commissioned us to share His light because His light make a difference in people's life. We know that, right? Because we will experience it. His light changed our lives so that you can turn around, change others' life, make a difference. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. So I am glad that you are here tonight to be reminded of what's in that gift and what we are supposed to do and welcome to his birthday party, right? This is birthday party for who? <laughs> Jesus. We say this morning, um, this evening, right? What do you do when you go to birthday party? Celebrate. Celebrate. What do you bring? Yes. Gifts. All right. How do you know what to give when you are invited to celebrate to go a birthday party? What do you? How do you know? What's on your heart? What's on your heart? And what? What's on your heart? Amen. Jesus. All right, Jesus. You know, some of you know what to buy. Really, you know what the receiver was, right? And some of us, including me, is terrible at what to buy. We don't even want to think about what to buy. So we ended up buying things that, in my heart, what I want, right? And give to the other person, right? I'm not going to tell you about my mistake. But I'm gonna make my husband be born over tonight. And one time, he bought me 
for my birthday gift, a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's not just a vacuum cleaner, it is right out, hot, right out of the uh, uh, market, it's a brand new style, it is all powerful, all dimensional, and it can do everything, anything, in the house, in the garage, everything. It can clean the carpet, it can clean the floors, it can clean the uh, blinds, the dust, and the ceiling fan, and everything. He was so excited to get it for me. It just came right, you know. And those of you who know me, I could care less. But it was so complicated, so powerful. And he tried to explain it to me how I should be using it. I keep telling him, I don't get it. I don't get it. So he was demonstrating, showing to me, and he ended up cleaning the entire house. <laughs> so I don't mind such guilt. Every time he says, have you ever used it? I said, I forget. Can you show me again? <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, the point is, what did you bring for the birthday guest of honor for Jesus tonight? You may have brought what's in your heart. You may have brought something Jesus is not really delightful to receive that, but it's okay, he doesn't mind. Do you know what Jesus wants? Do you know what our God wants from you? Who's got the whole wide world in his hand? Who's got everything? What does he need from you? Hmm? I am poor compared to God, compared to so and so, what does he possibly asking me to bring for his birthday? What, what would that be? Somebody gotta shout it! It's from my heart. It's your heart. It's your heart. Our Lord Jesus is a standing the door of your heart knocking. And he said, if you will open it, he will come and live with you. That is the best gift you can ever give to the creator the, of the universe, Jesus Christ. So if you haven't had a chance to give your heart to Jesus, tonight is the night, the best night you can do that. And if you haven't had publicly say that, okay, I want to give my heart to Jesus, I give you a chance to do so tonight. You only need to do is A, B, C. And I will lead you, you can only repeat after me, that you were given the best gift to Jesus if you are able to do that. Is there anyone? A, B, C. I am. I admit I am a sinner. <coughs> B. Believe Jesus is the Son of God. And C. I commit my life to follow Him. Is there anyone tonight brave enough to stand up and tell the whole wide world that Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior. The multitude of angels will rejoice when you do that. Is there anyone? Everybody has received Jesus? Everybody has given your heart to Jesus? Is that it? Hallelujah! Right? Amen! Now, You've given your heart to Jesus already yesterday, year ago, ten years ago. What can Jesus expect you to bring tonight? Hmm? Uh -huh. 
our Lord Jesus knows only one thing, wants only one thing, year after year, day after day, minute after minute. What is that? Our heart. Heart. That's right. So, you have given your heart 10 years ago, so you don't have to bring your heart tonight. No, you bring your heart 10 years ago, a heart that is a stale heart. Mm -hmm. Even if you have given him your heart yesterday, it's a yesterday, one day old. Our Lord God wants fresh, clean heart, pure heart, every day, every moment of our lives. So tonight, it is the night that we all want to give Him. Ask Him, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me, so that I can offer myself to you as a Christmas gift, as your birthday gift. Lord God, send your light and cleanse me. I want to be cleansed and purified by the blood of Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to you this evening. If any of you want to do that, please rise. Stand in your pew. I want to pray for you. I want the power of the Holy Spirit seal your commitment and bless your socks off. If you want to do that, please rise. Let the Spirit of the living God Pour out his anointing onto you, clean you, cleanse you with his spirit, his blood. Yes, please, please rise. Don't look around so that you can be a good light bearer. You can Hold your light high, burning brightly, and reflecting His light upon you. Oh Lord God, 